Are you up for a challenge? Want to see how much you know about cybersecurity? Well, I've got a quiz for you. Seven questions, and we're going to go through each one of these, and I want you to pick the best answer. So if you're ready, then get out your number two pencil, close your books. We're ready to start. Keep score. Okay, not all of these questions are going to be rocket science, so don't be prepared for uh, a Mensa test. But let's have some fun with these. Okay, the first one. Cybersecurity involves prevention, detection, and response, protection, obfuscation, and reporting, encryption, encryption, and more encryption, firewalls, antivirus, and hope. Well, I, I do hope that you understand hope is not a strategy, so that would be a really bad idea, although firewalls and antivirus are certainly important technologies. Not nearly enough. Lots and lots and lots of encryption, nah, that's not going to do it either. We need to encrypt, but that's not nearly sufficient. Protection, obfuscation, and reporting. Well, protection and reporting are certainly big parts of this. Obfuscation, which is basically trying to hide uh, the, the details of the system, that is not the way to get a system more secure. So if you got A, you got it right. It's prevention, detection, and response. Everything we do in cybersecurity is about doing those three things. Question two. With FIDO passkeys, if you lose your device, there is no way to recover your account. All right, either that's true or false. Hopefully you're aware, unless there's some sort of superposition of states and some sort of odd Schrodinger's cat situation, it's not neither and it can't be both. So we'll eliminate those right off the bat. Now, is it true or is it false? The reason I put this one is when I did a FIDO video on passkeys, the number one question people asked was about what happens if I lose my device. So I want everyone to understand that in fact, there is a way to recover. In fact, you can recover a number of different ways. One is if you've got different devices out here, uh, they can all sync up to some sort of cloud service so that if I lose this one, then I can just recover my pass key on another device. Or I can do regular account recovery just like you do when you lose your password and you click the forgot my password. Question number three. These aren't too hard, right? Zero trust can be summarized as A, trust everything, verify nothing. B, trust nothing, verify everything. C, the bare minimum. D, a paranoid delusion. Well, uh, a lot of people say that I'm suffering from one of these, but no, it's not that. Uh, we, we really do want to do zero trust. It can help our organization if we do it. The bare minimum, for most organizations, zero trust is not the minimum standard that they would follow. It would be the maximum standard that they would follow, but it's a good aspirational goal to get to. So we're down to these two. Trust everything, verify nothing, trust nothing, verify everything. Think about it this way. We've got, on opposite ends of a spectrum, we've got implicit trust and we have zero trust. And think about it this way. Trust everything and verify nothing, that's this guy. Trust nothing, verify everything, that's zero trust. So here's your correct answer. Question four, we're about halfway through. Are you holding up okay? Let's see. Which of these should you do first if you're defining an IT security program? Define policy, encrypt everything, analyze risk, or get a good breakfast? Well, as much as I believe in getting a good breakfast, I don't know that that's exactly what we're looking for here, so not in the best answer category of possibilities. I'll tell you, a lot of people think it's here. You start with defining a policy, and that's the way they go about doing things, is they do their policy, then from there they do an architecture, from there they do an implementation of whatever it is that they've architected, then they audit what they are doing in their systems, but you know what they didn't do? They didn't analyze risk. This is actually not the right answer. It's analyze risk. Clearly you want to encrypt the things that are important to you, but that's not the way that you build an IT security program, just encrypt everything. You'll probably do that somewhere along in this phase. So I'm going to suggest to you, you start at analyzing risk, and risk is what informs your policy, and then the rest of the cycle works. Okay, for question five, we're going to make it a little more difficult. This has been really easy so far, I know. So let's do a little bit of a challenge. What happens to the strength of a symmetric key when you make it one bit longer? Well, does it double? Does it stay the same in terms of strength? Does it get slightly stronger? Or 
does it create a rip in the space-time continuum? I hope to goodness that this is not the case, because then we'd all be in trouble. So then, now we look at this. You know it's not going to be the same, because the longer the key, the more possibilities that someone would have to try in order to break it. And it turns out that the correct answer is not a slight improvement. In fact, it's a doubling. So you make a symmetric key even just a little bit longer and it makes a huge difference. Let me show you why. So a symmetric key, remember that's like this, where you have the key that you encrypt with is also the same key that you decrypt with. That's why we call it symmetric. It's the same on both sides. Now, how do we know what the strength of a symmetric key is? Here's the simple mathematical formula for that. It's two to the n, where n is the number of bits in the key. So the longer, the larger the number of n, the more strength you have, the more different possibilities. And if you know how to do exponents, then you know two, for instance, two to the second, will give you four possibilities. So you'd have to try four different things, worst case, until you got the right one. If you'd make this one bit more, it'd be two to the third, so that would be eight. And you also can tell, I'm sure, that eight is twice as much as four. So just by increasing by one bit, we double the strength. And of course, in the real world, we use uh, strings that are much longer than this. We're going to use more things like 128, uh, 256, and things like that. So it's a lot stronger by just a simple addition of one bit. Okay, number six, coming down the home stretch. How are you doing? Hold out for just a little bit longer. Hardening is an example of which security principle? Defense in depth, separation of duties, the principle of least privilege, or what happens when you leave bread out too long. Okay, this is definitely true, that, that this is what happens, but it's not really related to our question. How about defense in depth? That's the idea where I don't rely on any single security mechanism. It's kind of belt and suspenders, so that way the pants always stay on. No, that's not really what hardening is about. Separation of duties? No, that's separating so that one person can't make a transaction and approve that, for instance. So we would require collusion in order for someone to subvert the system. That's not it. So by process of elimination, it's the principle of least privilege. Now, if you're not quite sure why, let's take a look at what hardening means, this, this term in general. What it means is if I take a system, maybe I install a web server, install an application, a database, or what have you, uh, it may come with a default user ID and password with default access controls built into it. And it may install some services that I don't actually need. So what I wanna to do to harden this system is I wanna change all of these things and eliminate any of the IDs that I don't need, any of the access controls that are not absolutely necessary, and any services that aren't required in order for the system to operate. Congratulations, you've made it to the final question. Question seven, absolute security, A, is ultimately achievable, B, requires good firewalls, C, is worth any cost, D, is a pipe dream. Remember, pick the best answer. Okay, so absolute security is ultimately achievable? Uh, not really, because there's always going to be some level of risk. If a computer is operational, it can be hacked. Just remember that, no matter how good a job we do. Requires good firewalls? Well, yeah, good firewalls will certainly help, but it's not nearly sufficient. It's not going to give you absolute security by any means. So that would be a necessary but not sufficient condition in this case. Is worth any cost? Well, not really, because we don't want to spend more to secure a system than what the thing is actually worth. So we're not going to spend infinite amounts of money in order to secure something unless that thing was worth infinite amounts of money. And then D, this is the trick part. You notice in all the other questions, the last one was always kind of a ridiculous answer. And this one sounds ridiculous. It's a pipe dream. That means it's something that's not going to be true. Uh, it turns out that is the case. So I gave you a little bit of a, a trick question in this one. Absolute security is a pipe dream. We're never going to get a system that has no risk involved with it. But that doesn't mean we quit. We still keep fighting the good fight. We still keep doing the things that we need to do to make the system as secure as our risk tolerance would dictate. Okay, you finished the quiz. Let's see how you did. If you got seven out of seven correct, you're a super cyber geek. If you got six out of seven correct, I'm going to say you're a cyber warrior. If you got four or five, then you're a serious student. Keep learning. 
If you're two to three, okay, you're a Padawan, and there's a lot more to learn, but keep it up. If you've got one, you're beginning the journey. That's fine. If you got zero, you're just really unlucky, I would say. But in all of these cases, what I've done is in the description below, there's a link to a video where you can find out more details about every single one of these questions by looking at other videos that we've done on the channel. So I hope this helps you in your understanding of cybersecurity. I hope more than anything, you had a little fun with this. This wasn't meant to be super hard and hopefully it wasn't. And hopefully you now know areas where you can improve and you can focus on cybersecurity and beat the bad guys. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting and would like to learn more about cybersecurity, please remember to hit like and subscribe to this channel.